Olive Gardens, and on Sunday at the Arena in St. Louis, the Maple Leafs even up this series in two games each with a 4-1 victory. They did it by their own admission, by going to the net and throwing Blues goalie Curtis Joseph off his game. We asked Brett Hall, the captain, about that. No, I don't think so. I think it, it worked because it got us off our game uh, as players. Uh, uh, you know, we saw them go into the net more, which you, which you have to do in a, in a playoff series like this. And uh, uh, they would go to the net, uh, and obviously when you go to the net, you're going to bump the goalie. And, and our D started to get upset with it, and the players started to get upset, and, and uh, as we did, so did Cujo. Joining me for tonight's game now is John Davidson, and we heard Brett Hull talk about losing focus as a team and a net. Curtis Joseph did that Sunday. He can't afford to do that tonight. Absolutely not. You know, in this situation, Tom, Toronto has put a lot of pressure on the St. Louis goal. Here you're going to see how the goaltender, Joseph, loses his focus. He starts to react, gets frustrated, and the team feeds off that in a very negative fashion. Now, remember, he's averaged 48.5 shots against in the four games, two of them, of course, into double overtime. So the play has been uh, prominently inside the St. Louis zone. That has to change for the Blues. They've got to start thinking about getting pressure on Toronto's goal and Felix Potvin, their goaltender. And don't be surprised if the Blues say, they're going to run our goaltender. We're going to go down and try and make life a little miserable at the other end. And I think the referee will be on top of that. On the other side of the ice, what a success story, John, this year in Toronto. Pat Burns has taught this team by his own admission to play two kinds of hockey. One with the puck, but also to work hard without the puck, i.e. defensively, and the players have really absorbed his system. He knows how to push the right buttons. A lot of people talk about this hockey club here in Toronto being a very tight club. Kind of like the Walton family, if, if, if you see the, uh, the television series. Very, very close, very tight. However, he knows when to step on somebody, when to force somebody, when to bark at them, when not to. And he's had his best players play great, including Potvin and Goal and up front Dougie Gilmore and the question is how much gas does he have left he's played a lot of hockey to this point well the Norris Division Championship is now down to a best of three in two of those three games are scheduled right here for Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto game five the Leafs and the Blues up next on National Hockey Night Ray Motors like no other dealership in the Alley Kiski Valley hello I'm Roger Ray at Ray Motors in New Kensington we take pride in giving our customers a G please yes their best to limit those. Sunday's game was not exciting to watch by any stretch of the imagination, but this is how the Leafs play. This is how they got here. This is how they'll continue to play. Well, this is a Pat Burns coach team, and Pat Burns teams play this way all season long, and so now you're down to the last three games. A two out of three series, home ice advantage to the Maple Leafs. You have to think in a long series, the team that knows how to grind out the low-scoring victories has an edge. The one factor that could turn it around is still St. Louis goaltender Curtis Joseph. And another guy, everybody's looking at Gilmore in Toronto, but I talked to Daryl Sittler, the Hall of Famer, now with the Toronto organization, and he said that Wendell Clark, when he plays emotionally, they played very well against Detroit, and they need him to play emotionally very well. He scored the first goal Sunday, so they look to him for emotional leadership in this series. All right, the Leafs and the Blues, the emotion will flow on Carlton Street. Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. And you talk about Wendell Clark, he got things going in St. Louis on Sunday. He'll try and keep it going tonight. You can feel it deep inside. Dedication and a real sense of pride. And you're giving it your best. Both Visa and American Express Gold Cards can get you to La Roche-Guillon, one of the prettiest towns in France. But should something go wrong here, only Visa Gold can get you out. You had to come to France, right? Eh? Don't start, Marty. Because La Roche-Guillon's only towing you service... Get a tow truck in. No, we're not getting a tow truck. I can get this out. ...doesn't take American Express. We? Oui? Visa Gold, delivering what really matters. Uh, Jamal's wrong. I mean, that means I eat France. Oh. It's everywhere you want to be. The Complete Car Cost Guide studied over 500 cars to determine which offered the best overall values. Which did they choose? The Volvo 240 Wagon. The Volvo 940 Turbo Sedan. The Volvo 940 Turbo Wagon. And now Volvo has made them even better values. The Volvo Best Value Program. Now until May 31st. Call us for a dealer nearest you. A hot new peanut just rode into town with a spicy taste that's getting everybody all fired up. 
Got some more. Maybe you ought to practice. With Mild. Try new planer's heat in mild and hot. Are you an AT&T salesman? Yes. Is your company telling customers that MCI's 800 service isn't reliable? Yes. Is that the truth? Yes. ESPN's presentation of the Stanley Cup Playoffs is brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural. Proud to be your bud. By Kit Metallic Car Polish for today's metallic paint finishes. And by the new Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. Welcome back to our Stanley Cup studios once again. We'll get you out to Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto in just a moment, but we have a little time. So, Al, you've been noticing some of the hotter players in the league and some of the guys who need to get it going. Some surprising guys on either side of that list. You start in St. Louis. They've got a pretty hot team. They've got a hot goaltender. One guy that doesn't get all the recognition he should, well, Craig Janney. Look at that. Five assists in the last three games in Boston. They're wondering where he was. He's showing up for the playoffs in St. Louis. Greg Adams scored in seven consecutive points for Van games for Vancouver. Patrick Waugh, 8 0 in his last eight starts. On the other side, guys not too hot. Well, we go right up to Montreal in that Adams division. No goals in nine games. Playing all right, but not scoring the goals. Robbie Strauber, 47 goals allowed. Look for a goalie switch again in LA. And Toronto, John Cohen benched last game. Only two goals in the playoffs. Now, you mentioned the goaltending problem in Los Angeles. Jimmy, you need to look at that series. You don't know which team's going to show up on a given night for either side. Blowouts in a couple of these games in this series. Tonight they play again. Yeah, but there is one guy who's very hot, and that's big 99 Wayne Gretzky. He's playing as well as I've seen him play in the last two, three years. And he could be the thing that enables the Kings to win this series. Again, Vancouver is a team like Toronto. They're good at winning low-scoring games, grinding it out. They have the home ice advantage. But he is a factor in this series, and he could be the difference. Well, L.A. and Vancouver also tied at two games apiece, as they are in Toronto, where the Maple Leafs are set to meet the St. Louis Blues. In this one, now a best of three. Let's join Tom Meese and John Davidson. Thank you, John Saunders. Fireworks going off, and Saunders isn't even in the building. I don't understand it. We're set for game five. The Blues and the Maple Leafs, the pivotal game, tied at two coming in. The goaltenders tonight, you've heard so much about Curtis Joseph. Well, there he is. Curtis Joseph, many people believe the reason the Blues are as far as they are in the playoffs and tied at two after four games. His record and his goals against is unbelievable at 1.68, and that includes four goals against in game four Sunday afternoon in St. Louis. On the other end, the rookie, Felix Potvin, started out behind Grant Fuhr when this hockey season started many, many moons ago, but now he's going to be tough to move out of that net. It appears for a long time to come, John Davidson. This young man has acquitted himself quite well. I think overshadowed somewhat by the fine play of Joseph. However, Potvin has been the individual who's been able to sustain his own play and gotten stronger as the playoffs have moved along. Both these goaltenders play a deep game, very close to the goal line. Let's see if Toronto continues to bump Joseph, and let's see if St. Louis decides, hey, they do it to our goaltender, we're going to go and do it to theirs. If it happens early, I think you'll see a penalty by Marowelli, the referee. And Marowelli, the referee, the line's been Ron Finn and Kevin Collins, and we're underway from Maple Leaf Gardens. Hunt goes into the St. Louis zone, and Curtis Joseph leaves it for number 21, Jeff Brown. Brown up to Garth Butcher. This is Brett Hall at center. His backhand pass over the stick of Basil McRae. And into the corner for icing against the St. Louis Blues. On the other side of the center ice red line into the corner and the face off back in the St. Louis zone. You're looking at one of the younger defensemen for Toronto, Lefebvre, who came over to the Maple Leafs from the Montreal Canadiens. Toronto had problems on the blue line. They had lost some defensemen, including Rick Natchez, who went to Philadelphia, and they needed to change. So Pat Burns reached out with the help of management. And they got Lefebvre. He plays with the experienced Jamie McCowan on the blue line. And you can see that that twosome's on the ice with the best forward line that Pat Burns has, and that's Doug Gilmore. Bob Barry wants the team to play more in the offensive zone, create chances, more forward-checking for his Blues that hasn't been there throughout this series very often. Brian Wilson set to take the face off with Doug Gilmore. Very hot in this building. Could become a factor late in the evening if we go late in the third period or into overtime. No air conditioning here at Maple Leaf Gardens. The temperature near 80 today in Toronto. Lowry with it now for the Blues. Gets it up to center ice. This is Rick Zombo. Zombo dumps it into the Toronto zone. 
Lowry has it in the corner, looking for somebody in the slot. Has to pass it to Wilson. Brett Hull, the team captain, looking for Lowry in the slot. And Jamie McCown skates it out for Toronto. McCown is uh, tripped up by Brett Hull, but only incidental contact is Garwelli, so play on. Lefebvre at center ice. He'll dump it in, and he dumped it in from the wrong side of the red line, and a faceoff back in the Toronto zone. So icing the call against the Maple Leafs. This series has been very closely contested. The first two games, yes, don't adjust your sets. John went into double overtime games, one and two in this building. One thing to remember is that Toronto has scored one power play goal in each of those four games. St. Louis has had a dreadful time. They're one for 15 combined on the power play as Pat Burns looks on, talking today about what he tries to do to get away from the stress of coaching in the playoffs. Loves country music. He says, are you on an ESPN tonight? Yeah. Are you on in Nashville? Yeah. yeah. He says, oh, wow. He says, if you get a chance, say hello to Tanya Tucker for me, will you? <laughs> <laughs> we can start rumors that way. <laughs> Pat, Pat's not married, is he? Uh, he's got a girlfriend. Yeah, I'll right. get into that. <laughs> all right. You name dropper, you. Another whistle after an, after an offsides play in the Toronto Zone. It'll we'll come back out the center. Uh, Burns is quite a character, former Montreal policeman. And I don't mean on the ice either. Uh, both, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe both. Yeah. The, way, the way he runs things, he's had a game face on now for a few days. He blasted his players prior to game four in St. Louis, and his players responded. Now, before tonight's game, he said, Listen, St. Louis is going to be ready tonight. I saw their faces. They had game faces. I, I don't doubt that Bob Barry blasted his players. Very much like I did mine to get them ready for this one. This is absolutely a crucial game. Bill Burke carries into the St. Louis zone. That's Mark Osborne looking a weak shot in on Joseph, who makes a routine stick save. Played about a minute and a half here in the first period. No score for Maple Leaf Gardens. National Hockey Night, Game 5, North Division Finals. St. Louis Blues, Toronto Maple Leafs. Jeff Brown back hands it into the Toronto zone. Nelson Emerson goes for it. Can't get there, though. The leads are clear. Now they don't clear as Garth Butcher pitches in and dumps it back in. Osborne with it for Toronto up to Berg. Bill Berg at center. Butcher using plenty of room and Berg shot is well wide. Off the boards to Zenzel. Now Mike Foligno on for his first shift of the night. He and Denny Felsner, the rookie out of Michigan, counseling along the boards. And here comes Brendan Shanahan out for St. Louis. Shanahan playing with Felsner and Jenny tonight. Mike Kusilinski walking a weak one into the slot area. Glenn Anderson went for it. Now it's Mike Foligno. Foligno got some room. Glenn Anderson. And his shot is blocked by the defenseman, Jeff Brown. Anderson ever dangerous. He's in the corner now. This is Glenn Anderson, the former Oiler, in front. And Joseph to save. And the Blues will have to clear. St. Louis needs a change. They got their players stuck on the ice for a long period of time. Toronto had made a change. Very well rested, and you can see they had the scoring chance because of it. Foligno sends it into the St. Louis zone. Kurt Giles on the ice now has the puck. That's the only change that St. Louis has made in the playoffs to date. Sitting is Hedigan, the young defenseman, and Kurt Giles in the lineup. The first change in the playoffs for the Blues. And Felix Pontac covers up the loose puck in the crease area. Everybody held their breath because Basil McRae and Todd Gill went into the boards behind the net, but... Nothing there except incidental contact. We've only had one shot apiece so far through the first two minutes, 59 seconds. But then a very coachable 21-year-old. Again, let's look at the Blues with the breakout, and you can see how three forwards of the Leafs caught deep, but the puck has moved back up when the Blues breakout did not work. And the Blues, if they want to do one thing, that is to try and trap Three players deep in their zone with a quick outlet pass. That's what Bob Barry, along with Wayne Thomas, the assistant coach, and Harold Schneps and Paul McLean, the coaching staff, won against Pat Burns' team. The quick outlet pass trapped forwards, because not often against Toronto do you get the three-on-twos or two-on-ones. Danny and Gilmore, the face-off in the Toronto zone, and Gilmore wins it. Doug Gilmore, as you saw in SportsCenter, one of the leading candidates for the most valuable player trophy. This season in the NHL. A lot of changing on the fly for St. Louis. As soon as the puck was dropped, they changed their defensive pairing to get Sambo and Barron on the ice against Doug Gilmore. That's the matchup Bob Barry wants. He wants a defense pairing against Gilmore. He also changed Janney for Bassett 
a hard-working, hard-hitting centerman. He wants Basson opposite Gilmore. He doesn't care about the wingers, but he wants that center, a punishing center in Basson, to hit Gilmore throughout the game. Bob Rouse plays it for Toronto up to Ken Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt dumps into the St. Louis zone and chases it. Now you'll notice that Basson got on the ice for Toronto, or pardon me, for St. Louis. Quickly, Toronto took Gilmore off. This is Eastwood to Wendell Clark. Save, rebound, save. Curtis Joseph, the first two hard saves of the night at a penalty call against the Blues. Well, two saves for Joseph, but now the Maple Leafs will be on the power. And the first bump on the goaltender is Joseph was bumped by Manderville. Toronto, whose power play has worked in each game of this series, gets an opportunity to go to work. For the playoffs, for the entire playoffs, uh, the power play cooking at 15.1%. But they have tallied to right, John, in each uh, game of this uh, four-game series so far. And Miranov was going back to get the puck now. He primarily is a power play specialist. He has the big shot. Pat Burns does not like to use him at even strength, but he knows about the shot, so he's on the power play. Here's Nikolai Borshevsky. Borshevsky, he's out there with Miranov and with Todd Gill and with Gilmore. Gilmore deflecting or make that uh, Andrew Chuck deflecting in front. A shot by Miranoff is wide to the stick side. He had a lot of net to shoot at. Miranoff off the in front again, and Gilmore's attempt to deflect goes wide. Well, some great pressure here by the Maple Leafs. All shots from the point, and Gilmore trying to deflect the puck in front. Good save by Joseph on the one time that Gilmore got to the puck. Todd Gill dumps it back into the St. Louis zone. One minute, seven seconds left in the Toronto power play. No score here for Maple Leaf Gardens early. Gilmore in front, can't connect with Andrew Chuck. Back to Gill. He's got some room at the point. He'll give it to Miranov. All right, Joseph using his stick on Andrichuk. Todd Gill in close. He's wide to the stick side. Joseph had the post cover. Very quick boards here in Toronto. If you miss the net from any angle at all, the puck will whirl right around the boards and out of the zone like we just saw. Dmitry Miranov skates it out of the Toronto zone. Murray Barron corrals it and just ices it down with 35 seconds left in the Toronto power play. Very quick paced power play for Toronto. They didn't slow it down at all. Lowry now controls for St. Louis. Shorthanded. The Blues have three men in the Toronto zone and don't want to get caught up, so they'll just let the Maple Leafs catch up to it as the time rags down. Under 20 seconds left down. The man advantage for Toronto. Logging up is Dave Ellett. Ellett the long shot around the boards as Glenn Anderson pinches in, but Rick Zombo is there, and this should just about do it if the Blues clear the zone, and they do. Five seconds left in the penalty. Real good penalty kill for St. Louis. One great save by Joseph. Off the deflection in front by Gilmore. And the teams are now five aside. And Basson steps out of the box. Glenn Anderson steps into the zone, though. Anderson trying to crisscross with Polino. Ellett's got some room. The shot deflected in front by the defense of St. Louis. And Marowell is going to call another penalty. He's going to get Murray Barron, who's on the back of Mike Polino. And the Leafs are going to have another power play. And Joseph skated out to Marowell to voice his opinion. Marowell turned and glared. And see Foligno having trouble with the right arm. Now watch in front. Krusielniski's there. Foligno's there. He gets cross-checked from behind by Barron. Barron, a strong, strong, big defenseman. Powers Foligno. Foligno's been around the goal net all series long. Here he comes. Pushed from behind. More of a push than a cross-check. However, it's away from the play. And Toronto will have another chance. They called a penalty on Joseph. Well, maybe that's why Joseph was upset with the referee. I do know one thing. During the recent power play, the first power play Toronto had, Joseph was chopping at Andrew Chuck's legs. Chopping and chopping and chopping. So now, Joseph, we talked about it earlier, as Brett Hall will go to serve the minor. Let's see Joseph get up. Oh, yeah. He used the bottom end of his stick, came right on top. You know what? They could have called uh, Barron, Polino. too. They well, Barron was more of a push, I thought, than a cross-check. And that's why I said push. But Marowelli there discussing things with a young goaltender. He better get his focus right back right now. Even if Toronto doesn't score, if they generate chances, it'll give them that offensive flow that they want early in the game. The number one unit back on the ice now for Toronto. And uh, Brett Hull serving the penalty you might say, why Brett Hull? Well, if Hull can step out of the box and maybe get a loose puck at center after the penalty expires, he can make things very interesting. Hull's not going to be out there killing penalties anyway. So the Leafs back on. The power play situation right in front. Wyszewski, Evans, head scores! That 
That's five power play goals by Toronto in the series. For Andrew Chuck, it's his second. You see him on the right side, stay out of the view. It's a four, three on three, but you see a wide open elite player's got Andrew Chuck just eight still. Bad defensive play by the Blues. It's a three on three, and you see two of them go to one side there. That leaves Borshevsky open, and you also see at the same time Andrew Chuck wide open. Borshevsky tried the shot, it didn't work. The puck came to Andrew Chuck, and after Joseph, who used his stick in a very liberal fashion before he was called. Joseph takes the penalty. Toronto scores on the, on the power play. Ninth goal of the playoffs for Denny Vanderchuk, the longtime Buffalo Sabre. Brendan Shanahan was the nearest blue to Vanderchuk. He appeared to be a bit confused killing that penalty, and it cost the blue. As soon as you start running around, everybody else tries to do other people's jobs. And two wrongs never make a right. And you can see the Blues got in trouble when two people went after one, and Andrew Chuck See him stay wide open. Shanahan had to take away the point pass. The two men on the left, originally Tom, who went after Gilmore on the backside, inside the goal line, in the corner. As soon as that happened, they were in trouble. Toronto, a lot of power plays around the league will slow things down and try to make the perfect play. Toronto's power play here has just been rocket fast. Boom, 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 boom. Passing, scoring chances, point shots, nothing slow about it at all. And, and St. Louis better realize this now. They better start taking care of themselves as far as penalties go, or it'll be a long night. Bob Rouse gains control of the faceoff of the Toronto zone, so the Maple Leafs break out on top on the goal by Andrew Chuck, who so many years was labeled as not playing well in the playoffs in his years in Buffalo. He's uh, erased that label, and then some here this season in Toronto. Back out the center, Kirk Giles, longtime Minnesota North Star captain in his second year with the Blues. Rouse pass intended for Janney. Bob Rouse has it. That's Andrew Chuck from Nikolai Borshevsky. And Doug Gilmore at 618. That's the official on the goal. That point. Off sides and uh, sticks got up between Zombo and Bird. That point by Gilmore now gives him 18 playoff points. Trails Wayne Gretzky by one for the overall lead. Today's metallic paints look beautiful, but can dull over time. Kit Metallic Car Polish makes metallic finishes glow, seals in protection. Mm, nice shine, new Kit Metallic. The best defense <coughs> is not to offend. Thus, introducing the new Right Guard Sport Stick. Now with a time release formula for longer lasting protection against hostile odor all day. For protection that endures. Chrysler Corporation has sold over 3 million minivans, 28 of which were bought by other car makers like Nissan, Toyota, and Ford. Maybe they were hoping to take our ideas and somehow improve on them. Their work has led to one sobering conclusion. Anybody can take apart the world's best-selling minivans. Only one company can put them together. Welcome back to ESPN's National Hockey Night, everyone. Game five, Norris Division Finals. Two games apiece, St. Louis and Toronto. One goal to none in favor of Toronto. I'm Tom Meads, along with John Davidson. Well, and you see Gilmore on the ice again. He always warrants attention. Right away, Bob Berry puts out that defensive pairing. Zombo and Barron to face Gilmore. And the puck in the St. Louis zone. McCown pitches in along the boards and does his job well. Keeps it in there. Brendan Shanahan picks up the loose puck and skates it out. With Belzer in the Toronto zone. Rick Zombo. The shot off the post. He hit the outside of the post. Big Zombo. Oh, that was close. And here comes Andrew Chuck out for Toronto. Dave Andrew Chuck. He's got McCowan on his left. He'll take the shot high and wide. And into the crowd it goes for a faceoff. Rick Zombo came about an inch and a half from tying this game. That was a great play by Brendan Shanahan to gain the zone in Toronto zone. Curl at the blue line and hit the fourth man coming late. Look at the number four, Zombo. You see three blues up there. Shanahan now makes the beautiful pass. He could have moved in even further if he wanted to. I don't think he realized he had that much time. You see how he beat Potvin to the glove hand side, but he caught the outside of the goal post. You think of Toronto's two wins in this series, both goals scored by an offenseman. Brown, Jeff Brown here in Toronto in double overtime, and then in St. Louis in game three, it was Garth Butcher who moved in to score the winner. And there, Toronto's first rush, sending her defenseman in. 
it pays off as they have a great scoring chance. And the face off at center ice. One nothing Toronto leads it with John Davidson. I'm Tom Mees. Game five Norris Division Finals and a whistle. And Farewell he's going to call I believe a holding penalty on Toronto. Ferocious for checking by the Leafs. Wendell Clark with two kids Manderville and Eastwood. And the four checking was so aggressive that you'll see Clark here reach out and pull down the defenseman Brown as he tried to break out of the zone. So Toronto get their first penalty. St. Louis now has a chance on their power play, which just simply hasn't worked. They moved the puck well. Brett Hull's been robbed, but they're one for 15. The only goal scorer is Denny Felsner. That's a second unit power play man. And of course the power play for the Blues worked so well in their opening series against the Chicago Blackhawks. They really made the Blackhawks pay. Is Toronto doing anything different to shut it down in this series? Well, I think more than anything, Pot has been very, very good at goal for one. See if Red Hulk takes the face off here, even ahead of Janney. Zenzel pinching into the St. Louis zone shorthanded. But Red Hull corrals the puck. Hull is out there with Jeff Brown, Nelson Emerson, Brendan Shanahan. Frank Chanty and Elise Eisen. Toronto talks about how aggressive they've been penalty killing. They don't even allow St. Louis to set up very often. Here, St. Louis gets a chance to set up because the Leafs changed, but it's aggressiveness. Look at Osborne move over right now. Jeff Brown skates to the other side of the red line and dumps it in for Shanahan. Brendan Shanahan in front when he waves at it as Dave Ellen had his stick tied up. Ellis behind the Toronto net, lose it for Mark Osborne. And Osborne gets it to center. Emerson has to wait for the Blues to get on side and immediately dumps it in. Jeff Brown has it hop over his stick and that'll cost a few more seconds. Blues have to get back on side to do so. Emerson over to Brett Hall. Osborne pressing Brett Hall. Hall's got a little room now. In front from a bad angle. Nowhere near the goal and Hotman just Watches it go by, and Toronto ices the, the puck and clears the zone. Shanahan had his head down. On the other side of the ice, wide open, was Janney. Shanahan missed the net from a bad angle. Janney to Hull, and his shot is blocked in front. The fave off the boards. Emerson keeps it in, backhands it into the corner. Fred Hull scores! It happened so quickly, John, you really... You almost have to sense where Brett Hull is. Uh, Bing, bang, boom. It's amazing. Is two scoring chances by Hull. An amazing pass from Janney to find Hull. And Hull had a shot blocked. Then the power play stays alive. And look who's passing the puck here. That's Brown, the defenseman. And it just took two steps so he could find Hull wide open. Watch Hull's stick. It's always open, always ready. He doesn't have to have the puck hit his stick and then have him take a look as to where he's going to shoot. He told us today, I don't look. I just want to get the shot away quickly. That was a shot that appeared to go through the legs of the goaltender. It, it's not the accuracy, it's the quickness. Red Hole never allows the goaltender to set up. Great pass from Brown in the corner, a defenseman, to hit Hall and Hall scores. And of the eight playoff goals you see that Red Hole has, five of them are on the power play. So Red Hall scores to tie it at 1-1. And that silences the partisan crowd here in Toronto for the moment. That ought to be a big look to the St. Louis Blues, John, who really have been outplayed the first half of this period. And to get their power play going. Yeah. That could mean something to them. It was so great against Chicago, and it took advantage of the bad penalty Chicago took. Now it becomes a weapon when it gets hot. Murray Barrett was allowed to carry into the Toronto zone, and Putman made the routine save as his coach, Matt Burns, looks on. The official on that goal, Hull, from Jeff Brown and Nelson Emerson at 9.29. This, this allows St. Louis immediately to get right into the game. They, they were guilty of not having good starts for their two games in St. Louis. There you see the quickness of the shot. Putt Van was in between. He wasn't standing up, and he wasn't down on the ice. He was halfway down because that man, Brett Hull, could release the shot so quick. And it went right through the wickets of the young goaltender. 10 minutes, 10 seconds left first period. Krusioneski and Wilson on the faceoff in the Toronto zone. And big Mike Krusioneski dumps it out of the zone to center. Giles with it. Stephen Quintal knocks it ahead. And Alec goes behind the net. First shift for Korolov. Yeah. He, yes. he is in the lineup place of Miller, Kevin Miller. And that's a surprise. I think St. Louis has found that they needed to put some fresh bodies in there. Maple Leafs doing a good job controlling it. Joseph had to make the
the save on a backhand by Mike Foligno as Foligno was falling in the ice. And Foligno had Pintel all over him. The goaltender went down before the shot, expecting a low shot, good save. Coming up next on ESPN's Tuesday Night Baseball, it's the hot Chicago White Sox, who have won five games in a row, taking on the power pack Seattle Mariners. As you look at the attempt at a goal by Mike Foligno there, the White Sox and the Mariners, Mariners led by Ken Griffey Jr., already has nine home runs. Pitching matchup, Dave Steve, the former Blue Jay, against Randy Johnson. Live baseball next on ESPN following our Stanley Cup action. Blue Jacks and the White Sox, Ken Griffey Jr. and Seattle. And right back here in Toronto, we're tied at one. Power play goals for each team. The defenseman, Zombo, and Barron on the ice talking to one another right now, discussing what they're going to do to make the change on the fly. So they're prepared to have Gilmore against them. Gilmore is not on the ice. However, Toronto may change on the fly. You've got two very smart, wily coaches here, Bob Berry and Pat Burns, and they'll challenge each other all game long regarding changing the players on the fly to get their matchups. Eastwood wins the faceoff. Wendell Clark, a quick shot away, but it's knocked down by the defense. Lee Bozon got a leg on it for St. Louis. Eastwood mucking along the board, still having control, gets it to Clark, and his shot is about a foot wide, that's all. To the glove side. Now in front, Joseph has to make the save on Manderville. Manderville controls the rebound. Blues a little bit disorganized in their own end, and they finally get it out. This is Rich Sutter. Part of the Sutter twins on this roster. Ron Sutter still nursing a separated shoulder injury. And a whistle for face off. Puck is lost. I think it's in somebody's equipment. No one seems to know where it is. Now they Maybe one of the stands. <laughs> You're taught as a ref when you can't see it. You, you blow it for the faceoff, and that's, <laughs> that's fair enough for the Maple Leafs. Now, do you know what this means? Tostil cut. Tostil cut. What's that mean? Cut. That sounds Russian to me. Yeah, I think it's Russian. It means fat cat. That's what Pat Burns says to him all the time. He says he got, got going last summer with a knife and fork, never really recovered, had a bad problem with an abscess tooth a, mo a month ago in the season, never recovered from that, and doesn't get a lot of ice time. So Pat Burns goes over it, and I didn't say it well. And all you people out there that speak Russian, I apologize. <laughs> I know Brasai means shoot. I know Shaibu means score. Oh, wait a minute, John. You work Shai in the, means puck. You work in the most cosmopolitan city in the world, and you don't know Russian? <laughs> of course, Kiskin's centering pass intercepted by Garth Butcher. Had to send you to Berlitz. Oh, good no, idea. Is, uh, <laughs> Jeff Brown can't catch up to the rebound. Gilmore and Jeff Brown bump hard behind the Toronto net. Hull is in there trying to center. McCown takes him down. There's a loose goal stick behind the net. Hot man doesn't have a stick. Finally, McCown hands it back to him. 8.25 to go for his period. Tied at one for Maple Leaf Garden. Butcher and McCray work to keep it in the Toronto zone, but Warshevsky eventually gets it out. This is Andrew Chuck. Andrew Chuck to Gilmore. Andrew Chuck went the penalty. He felt he was taken down illegally in center ice. Blues clear the zone again, and Todd Gill. Gill waits. Dumps it in where Curtis Joseph gets a stick up. There's another loose stick in the faceoff circle to the right of Joseph. Nelson Emerson quickly into the Toronto zone. He can skate. Shanahan gets an elbow in the oh, face of Glenn Anderson. And nothing was ever. Wow. By Zombo and Hotman makes the save. Shanahan has kept his cool so far, but did he ever take a mean elbow to the kisser? Chris Winnisky in the corner. And, and Shanahan just got Anderson back. Now Shanahan was going after Anderson. He ended up running his own goaltender over. But he got an elbow in and Ooh. Anderson anyway. Emerson, Hotman has to drop on the loose puck. As Brendan Shanahan goes into the gold crease area. Things are heating up physically here at the Gardens in Toronto. We're tied at one. We'll be back in a moment. Committed to holding the line on city taxes, public safety, fiscal management, and progress. Since his retirement, John Manaka has served the city of New Kensington as its full-time mayor. John Manaka has worked to protect citizens by bringing the number of police officers to 24 and supporting local volunteer fire companies. Under the Manaka leadership in the past 12 years, over $7 million in funding was procured for downtown and neighborhood projects. May 18th, vote John Manaka Mayor, Bernie Kubiak, and Don Bowers Councilman for the city of New Kensington. Justice, fairness, compassion, integrity.
These qualities describe James De Palma, candidate for district justice in Springdale and Cheswick boroughs, Harbor and Springdale townships. A longtime resident of this district, Jim understands the point of view of the people and their circumstances. Is I'd like to serve our communities and do the best job and do the fairest job that I can possibly do. James De Palma for district justice, strong enough to be firm, understanding enough to be compassionate. Back here in Toronto, time to take a look at the Budweiser Stanley Cup summary. Of course, Montreal wins over the Buffalo Sabres. Five overtime wins, just one short of a record. Patrick Waugh leading the way for the goalies with eight wins already. Wayne Gretzky, there's a familiar sight atop the playoff scoring charts. What is he, one point ahead of Doug Gilmore now? One point, Gilmore with 18, Gretzky with 19. And remember, Gretzky hasn't played those yeah. complete games when he had the river injury earlier in the Calgary series. St. Louis has been murdered so far, losing 15 of 16 face-offs. We'll see what happens here. Wow. Who's going to control well, this? Vanderbilt yeah. showed some strength. I mean, he just out muscled, out powered Bassett. That's another win by Toronto. And the puck comes all the way down to the St. Louis zone. Eastwood is racing Giles for him. Little Kurt Giles gets there first. However, Eastwood puts a body on him. And the Maple Leafs keep it in the St. Louis zone. Bassett with it behind his own net. 1 1 the score. Game 5, Norris Division Finals from Toronto. Series tied at 2. Game 6 series tonight in St. Louis. Rouse at the right point. Dumps it over Bassett's head over the glass into the crowd. Let's go back to our studios now and John Saunders. It's time for the Dodge playoff update, Tom. The Islanders and the Penguins from last night. The Islanders off to the slow start, got within two, but. Mario Lemieux redirecting this one past Healy, his second goal. Six to three is the final. You can see game number six here on ESPN tomorrow night. Right now, let's take you back to Tom and John in Toronto. All right, thank you, John. Well, there is Bob Berry behind the St. Louis net. I was thinking, we're going behind the St. Louis bench. If he's behind the net, they're in trouble. Berry and, and Pat Burns, both very successful coaches. The city used to hear in Montreal during their careers. You think about this, I'm talking to Dave Molinari, one of the fine hockey writers in Pittsburgh. He said, what does St. Louis, Los Angeles, Montreal, and Pittsburgh all have in common, and especially if they make the Final Four? So, I don't know, what? He says, all of them have been coached by Bob Barry. So that'd be quite interesting if those four teams happen to get in. And that's a big if. A lot of teams like Toronto and Vancouver and the Islanders playing very, very well. New York Karloff had a momentarily for the Blues. Back to Jeff Brown. Brown up the center, but now it's Toronto's punt with 6.05 left to go here in the second period. Lefebvre and McCown playing catch at the Toronto blue line. Here's Borshevsky. The Gilmore back to McCown. McCown maneuvers the shot, and Joseph pulls with the pads to make the save at 5.56 to go. Nice job by the Blues pushing everybody into the middle between the circles and allowing that man Joseph to see the shot from Crazy Legs McCowan. One of the, he, he loves to skate up the ice with a puck. His legs are going in every direction. This time, though, he moves the puck nicely to a wide open Borshevsky as the Blues were changing. Now, watch in front of the net here as Gilmore dumps the puck off. McCowan has it. See how everybody goes to the one side and clears the Leafs out of the way? Even if there's a rebound there, the, the Blues had taken the Maple Leafs and closed them right off. They had no shot at moving out and getting a hold of a rebound. Well, the way Joseph is played, John, you got to figure if he can see the puck 99 times out of 100, he's going to stop it. It's interesting the way he plays on his hands and knees. He thinks low shot first, and if you think about it, you can never shoot the puck too low, but you can shoot the puck too high. Face off back to Allen. He hit the outside of the post, stick side. Joseph never saw it until it was by him. And the Leafs controlling the face offs. I mean, it's so one sided, it's already become a factor in the game. There's a scoring chance off a drop. Janney loses control. Bill Berg takes it away from him at center ice. Therein lies one of the keys to Toronto's success in game four was their play at center ice. Able to stop St. Louis on the rush and just take it back in the other way. Blues almost cough it up behind their own net. Instead, it's Janney at center. Janney now has it dribble off his stick. And onside is Osborne. Bird goes for it on the right wing and pays for it with a big hit. Zombo and Osborne jousting. Peter Zessel with it down the corner. Former blue, Zessel around the boards to Gill. Zombo for St. Louis. 
going Zenzel. Candy sitting there waiting for a loose puck. Dave Lowry with it now for St. Louis just lost it to center. 440 and counting as both teams go for a line change. And our score is tied at one from Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto. National Hockey Night returns in a moment. Come on, let's get a cold one. Our total attendance for today's game. Oh, uh, would you look at this beer line? I'm going to go back. What? Foul ball? No, no, I'm not. Foul ball! Foul ball? Foul ball! If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down... Make it two Bud Lights, please. Make it a Bud Light. Hey, you got another ball? For under 10 grand, you can get a Dodge Shadow ES with a surprise option under the hood. One hot V6. And you know what that means, don't you? like another wild ride from Dodge. Available with or without a top. We're tied at one. You see the time remaining. This is a scoring chance off the face off. And you see what happens. The puck redirects off Sambo and just wide as Joseph looks in behind him. Scoring chances off the face off. Puck possession time off the face off. 17 to two. Yeah, that's a little one sided. Man. St. Louis has got to pick up on that. You see Bassett cheating here. He's almost facing the boards. By the ordinary fan, it's maybe the most overlooked part of this game, the face-off. St. Louis used a, a team format that time to work the puck out of the zone. Foligno, one-on-one, the shot, and the save by Joseph. Mike Foligno doing the hockey version of uh, trying to break down the defense one-on-one. -on -one. He's getting scoring chances, even though he's had to battle a defenseman while doing so, showing supreme strength. Loose puck and Brett Hall finally corrals it for the Blues. We're tied at one. First period, game five in Toronto. With John Davidson, I'm Tom Mees. Welcome to National Hockey Night here on ESPN. The chase for the Stanley Cup continues its long and winding road. Glenn Anderson clears his zone and Lowry lays his shoulder into him. Blues don't care for Glenn Anderson too much. That's it for what he did earlier in the game to Shanahan. Shanahan gets his licks in too. It'll oh, be interesting yeah. to see if those two continue to have a private battle. McCown to Nikolai Borshevsky to Gilmore. Gilmore tries to get it to Borshevsky. He does, and Borshevsky could not control it. And in the corner, Murray Barron is sitting on Borshevsky, and nothing's called. Boy, Barron must think he's in the rodeo in this game, John. He's sat on a couple of people. Well, he's trying to hold the players in the zone, Tom, so when Toronto comes back in, they'd be called on the offside. Andrew Chuck at center. Wilson is on his back. And Andrew Chuck still gets it to Borchesky. Going to be a penalty. Yeah. I believe Ron Wilson is going to go. Absolutely. As the Blues touch up, the Toronto Maple Leafs will go on the power play. Holding will be the call. At 16 minutes, 54 seconds, Ron Wilson the culprit. Uh, Ron Wilson had Andrew Chuck get, per, get body position on him. Heading towards the St. Louis goal. You'll see it here. Watch him head up ice, and Wilson's behind him. Now watch Wilson take one stick, uh, one hand off the stick, and reach around Andrew Chuck, and then finally just jump on the much bigger player. And down goes Andrew Chuck. Andrew Chuck got body position. Wilson had no chance, and you hate to see your team take a neutral zone penalty. Uh, more Stanley Cup coverage on National Hockey Night tomorrow night. It'll be game six. The Penguins and the New York Islanders. Can the Islanders force a seventh game with the two-time defending champions? Or can Pittsburgh win this series? And look forward to taking on the Montreal Canadiens. We'll find out tomorrow night, coast to coast, on ESPN, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific time. Now, well, Barrio got busy early last night, scoring 19 seconds into the game as Ron Wilson sits for St. Louis. This will be the third power play for Toronto. They have scored on the one of the two that they've had, and now they come out here with a second unit up front, Krushelniski and Felino. If the two of them get in front of Curtis Joseph, it's very difficult to see the puck. Shanahan, interestingly, takes a defensive draws, penalty killing wise. Anderson in front, and the shot is wide of the stick side. Anderson behind the St. Louis net. Off the skate of Butcher, and the Blues clear the zone. 
And Toronto won another faceoff. Yeah, from Shanahan, who was out there to, to take the draw. As soon as he lost the draw, he now has gone to the bench for a change. Toronto behind its own net. St. Louis doing some forechecking. Rick Sutter that time. He's bragging some time off that penalty clock. Minute 30 to go in the Toronto power play. Off the stick of Brown in front. He recovered nicely, but Miranoff keeps it in. Polino's taken down in front. He wanted a penalty. He won't get it. Garth Butcher did a good job. Well, since Joseph took that penalty and Toronto scored on the power play following it, he has not used his goal stick at all. He finally has settled down, I think, as far as pushing and shoving and chopping goes. He's got to worry about stopping the puck, not chopping people. Gilmore into the St. Louis zone, one on three. Doug Gilmore leaves it for Miranoff. And the save by Joseph. And he'll hang on with 58 seconds left to the power play. Butcher using his body to clear people out. A long high wrist shot from Miranoff. Joseph had no trouble seeing it all. Dark Butcher, now you'll see him in front of the goaltender here. Pick up Molino, knock him down. Away from the puck. Now he'll move across as the puck goes back to the point. You'll see him go back in front again. As, well, Toronto, trust me, moved back up the ice. And Butcher did a good job of clearing people out. Curtis Joseph. Man, the option to so much attention in the playoffs, and why not? He was just spectacular against Chicago, pitching two shutouts, setting a team record for consecutive scoreless minutes in goal. Warshinsky with it now for Toronto. Rouse is winding up, but they don't get him the puck. Gilmore to Ellen, who closes in, deflected by the defenseman, rather by the winger, Rich Sutter, over the goal. Rouse and Ellen at the point. Rouse with a drive score! in front. Andrew Chuck Zombo couldn't move him. Zombo tried to punch him in the back of the head. When you got bodies like this in front of the goaltender, how does he see it? Rouse will move across. Now watch Zombo in front. He can't move him. Right through the two players, maybe even hitting the skate of Zombo. Watch Zombo's right hand. Boom. Still, look at the goaltender look around for the shot. Low shot. And you see it sneak underneath the catching glove inside the goal post. Great view there. 2-1 Toronto, everything on the power play, and Toronto on their power play have had point shot after point shot after point shot with people standing in front of Joseph, the goaltender. Well, the goal is credited to the defenseman, Bob Rouse. And that's Rouse's second goal of the playoffs. At 18-17, his play is back on, so two power play goals for Toronto. One for St. Louis, and the uh, power play percentages of both teams going to go up based on what we've seen so far. Coming up, it'll be the Dodge Intermission Report on National Hockey Night. We're going to have Jim Schoenfeld and Al Morgetti analyzing tonight's first period. We'll take a look back at Mariel's night last night in Pittsburgh. Of course, John Saunders will be your host for the Dodge Intermission Report coming up in a moment. Power play-wise, during the regular season, Teams clicked on an average of 19.6%. In the playoffs, teams have averaged 19.7% on the power play. Very, very similar. Here in the first period, we've had three power play goals, and Toronto's power play has looked very, very sharp. They have big bodies down that they put in front. Foligno, Andrichuk, guys like that. Try and move them. Oh, try to see the puck through those big bodies. I mean, the point is this. You can't stop what you can't see, and Joseph didn't see that puck coming at him at 100 miles an hour to the last moment. Here's Craig Janney with a chance. Can't get the centering past the hole, though. Hull battling with Lefebvre now as we have under a minute to go in the first period. Zenzel, his drive is short-circuited by Butcher. Cars Butcher with it for the St. Louis Blues. To Hull. Cross ice to Janney. It's onside. Corlett to Janney. Janney. Tried to center instead of shoot, and he didn't make it. That was a great pass by Hull from one side of the rink to the other to try and get away from the fine checking that Toronto has. Very similar to Montreal. They close you right off, and it's hard to come up the ice and make two straight passes, consecutive passes. McCall dumps it in. Gintal has to go for it. Up to Shanahan. Under, under 20 seconds to go. Nelson Emerson almost had a break. He and McCown raced for it. And Emerson, if he would have been able to control it, was in business. Danny Felsner bumped off on McCown. Under 10 seconds to go. Now five seconds. That should just about do it for the period. As Cantal controls. 
And the fans giving their Maple Leafs a standing ovation. After one, it's 2-1 to one Toronto. It's been a powerful first period. Uh -huh. Three power play goals, 12-6 the shots. I thought that Toronto did a good job getting in front of Curtis Joseph again. He responded by taking one penalty, which cost his team a power play goal. And then he quit with the stick and such. Interesting period. Two to one, Toronto, as we get set for our first intermission. Nine intermission report coming up. I'm Tom Ease with John Davidson. We'll be back in a moment. Now let's go to the studios and John Saunders. John? All right, Tom and John, thanks a lot. The Maple Leafs at home with the lead, looking to take a 3-2 series lead. Welcome to the Dodge Intermission Report. When we come back, we'll hear from Al and Jim. We'll look back at the first period. We'll also take a look back at Mario Lemieux, who's back allowed him to play last night. That and more as the Dodge Intermission Report rolls along. It's 2-1, Toronto with the lead. Rick Zombo just on the wrong side of the post, or this thing will be tied up. We're gonna have to bail. What about the Bud Light? No time. There's only one left. You take it. I'll never forget you. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Not so fast. Yes. to the max. Performax from Pennzoil. Drain interval protection to the max. Performax from Pennzoil. Engine protection to the max. Performax from Pennzoil. New synthetic motor oil with Pennzoil's exclusive star molecule. Protects engine parts at ignition. Works like liquid ball bearings. Hangs tough during the most extreme driving conditions. Performax protects to the max. The weapons are deadlier. The romance is sweeter. The passion is hotter. <gasps> kiss me like you've never kissed me before. And the explosions are bigger. Keeps going and going. Yes. Hot shots part deal. Drama! Me! Rated PG-13. Starts Friday, May 21st at theaters everywhere. the performance and reliability of a true Hewlett Packard laser jet. The new HP LaserJet 4L easily surpasses other low-priced laser printers for the breakthrough price of just $849. The new HP LaserJet 4L printer. Now's the time to make the leap. If it isn't a laser jet, it's only a laser printer. Some things were made to fade away, but not Dutch for Ooh, we got the look that The Dodge Intermission Report is presented by the New Dodge, a division of the Chrysler Corporation. Welcome, everyone, to the Dodge Intermission Report. I'm John Saunders. Right now, it's a 2-1 lead for the hometown Toronto Maple Leafs, looking to go up 3-2 in the Norris Division Final. And, Jim, as we take a look at what's gone on in the first period, it's easy to see that St. Louis, also early in this game and also in game number four, a little bit off their concentration what they should be thinking about in the game. Yeah, well, it's definitely a leaf plan to crowd the net. After game four, Curtis Joseph said, I admit, it did take me off my game, but I will not allow that to happen again. Well, folks, he did allow it to happen. You'll see the Leafs continue the same smart game plan. There's number 18, Kent Manderville, a little extra bump on Joseph. Joseph knows it's an extra bump. Now, Felino's going to get pushed in. Watch the stick of Joseph give him a little chop right there. Okay. He's trying to get a message across, but he gets a penalty. Moments later, this is a power play goal, an empty netter for Dave Anderchuk. The Blues also got into trouble, bad penalties, with Ron Wilson taking a neutral zone hold. So there's two bad penalties, two power play goals for the Leafs. 
the Blues are going to have to play with more discipline if they want to win this hockey game. All the goals in the first period were power play goals. Now, Detroit is merely about three and a half, four hours away from Toronto, but they're light years away as far as being in the playoffs, a very disappointed bunch down the road. Well, let's face it, a lot of people think Detroit ought to be playing tonight. They should have beaten Toronto, seventh game at home. Guys like Eisenman on the team, Fedorov, and they don't come through, which means it's time to maybe shake things up in Detroit. First order business, probably coach general manager Brian Murray. Word is he's probably going to step down, remain as general manager. He'll be pointing some guys out of town, though, and one of those guys could be Bob Probert. Not as much of a factor anymore. Guys like Keith Primo in there. Another? Well, the goaltending fell apart for Detroit in the playoffs, and although Tim Chevelday came up with over 100 wins in the past three regular seasons, not getting it done in the playoffs isn't going to sit pretty, and he's probably going to be offered around the league. Detroit makes some changes. In addition, we should point out with Detroit, Paul Coffey didn't play that overtime in that final game. A lot of people thought he's on the bench. Could he have played? Still haven't got the final word on his wrist. Probably a broken small bone. If he had, play, had played, it could have been a very dangerous injury. He wanted to play. They told him to stay in the locker room. He wanted to be out on the bench with the team. So those people that thought maybe Coffey was not playing because he didn't want to play hurt, he could not play. Yeah, things shaking up for Detroit. And with Mr. Illich owning both the Tigers now, and the Tigers playing as well as they are, he'll want to get his Red Wings with that much power as well. And speaking of baseball, we have baseball following us here in the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. It's the White Sox and Bo Jackson against Ken Griffey Jr. Stellar seasons and a key to their rise to NHL prominence. His finest moment may have come in the 1982 Stanley Cup playoffs when he scored 17 goals in 19 playoff games. The sensational scores led the New York Islanders to their fourth straight cup title in one of Mike Bossy's many magic moments. Tomorrow night, live on ESPN. Welcome back once again to the Dodge Intermission Report. We'll get you back to the Norris Division Final in just a moment. But first, let's update what happened last night in the Patrick Division Final between the New York Islanders and the Pittsburgh Penguins. The biggest news, Mario Lemieux. His back allowed him to come back, and he played, and he was hot early on. Didn't keep him out of the lineup last night, and 19 seconds into the game, Past Glenn Healy, 1-0, his 50th career playoff goal. Only two points in the series coming in until last night. Then Tockett to Lemieux, to Stevens, back to Tockett. Two goals in 54 seconds. That's an NHL record. Al Arbor says we have to talk about this thing before completely gets away, but they did not talk enough because on the power play, Larry Murphy with a blast. Deflected pass Healy, 3-0, just a minute 48 into the game. Frustration for New York, Lemieux and... Claude Loisel get into a wrestling match here. Mario prevails. Watch, just tips this one in. 4-1. to one. They win it 6-3. Lead the series 3-2. And Rick Tockett says it's a big effect having number 66. Back. Well, the best way to describe it is, uh, you know, you're getting dressed and, and you just see Mario walk in the room and uh, it's just a presence. You know, he's not a rah-rah type of player. And, you know, he just comes in, he's got the big body and he puts his uniform on and you, and you just look over, you know, you can look to the right or left and you just see there's Mario. And he, it just brings a presence to, that, that our team, that uh, confidence, a quiet confidence that, uh, you know, other teams uh, don't have. You know, I, I kind of have the parallel to Michael Jordan, just as if he comes in the locker room. It's the same type of, uh, you know, uh, feeling that we have. Michael Jordan on skates, there's a little question. That's what Mario Lemieux is to the Stanley Cup champion Penguins. But what is it for a locker room? When you're a guy, you're lacing up the skates, you know you're a 500 team without the guy, now you know he's playing. Well, he's such a special individual. I mean, he's really been tested in this hockey season. The things he's had to overcome, Hodgkin disease, this chronic back injury, not only the physical aspect, but the mental and emotional aspect, I think sets him apart from a lot of other athletes. And when you have a guy like that and you know that he can re regain his focus when he's got all these other things that should be weighing him down mentally, he just goes out, he plays. Well, that's an inspiration for everybody in the entire locker room. The astounding thing to me about Lemieux this year, you know, the finalists for the awards came out today. And people were seriously saying, you know, Pat LaFontaine had a great year and Doug Gilmore is like God in Canada right now. But I'm telling you, look at the Penguins without Lemieux. People say, look, he's got Stevens and Barrasso and Tockett and Yager. They are what you said, John, 500 without him. And it looked like they were beatable in this series when he wasn't playing. The MVP, no questions. All right, Mario Lemieux will have a chance to wrap things up in the Patrick Division tomorrow night. You can see that here on ESPN as the Penguins take to the island to face the Islanders. 7.30 Eastern time. Ray Ferraro trying to stop that. Meanwhile, Curtis Joseph had no chance in this shot from Bob Rouse. Didn't see it until it was too late. 2-1, the Leafs on top.